The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, welcome everyone today and thank you so much for joining in for this webinar, How to Create a Digital Literacy Program. I am just going to wait a few minutes for anyone still logging on. So uh, in the meantime, just a bit of housekeeping. If you have any questions during the webinar, please type them into the question section in the panel on the right hand side of your screen. I will do my best to get to them during the presentation and I'll also take some time at the end to answer any questions you may have. Um, this is the third webinar in LEAP's 2017 webinar series. We have two more coming up this month on different topics. So if you're interested in um, registering for those, please visit us at leap.ngo. This will be the volume I'll be speaking at throughout the webinar. So please adjust your volume settings accordingly. To anyone watching this as a recording later with closed captioning, I do apologize that that couldn't be done live. Okay, so hopefully everyone planning to join us today has done so now. So I'm going to get things started. Welcome again, my name is Himali and I'm the Senior Project Officer for Digital Inclusion at LEAP. During this webinar, I'm going to provide a step-by-step -step guide to creating a digital literacy program using the digital mentoring model. Um, I'll be talking a lot about the digital mentoring model using uh, our LEAP in Lab, which is our digital mentoring um, program as a model. And through the Leap in Network initiative, we are offering support to any organization who would like to run their own digital mentoring programs. All the resources necessary to start a program have been compiled into our digital mentoring toolkit. And I'll be emailing you all this um, toolkit along with the recording later this afternoon. I have included a preview of what's inside that toolkit in today's handouts. So if you look on the right hand side of your screen at your panel, there should be um, a handout section that you can um, slide down. So LEAP's digital inclusion work aims to support underserved communities and individuals experience, experiencing disadvantage to use technology and to get online. And there are currently about 3 million Australians who are offline. Our main digital inclusion work is in the area of digital literacy, and I run and we run an on-site digital literacy program called the Leap in Lab. Uh, as I just mentioned, we also support the creation of new digital literacy programs through our Leap in Network initiative, and I'll be talking more about both of these programs today. I'd like to kick things off quickly by touching on the term digital literacy and what that really means. So digital literacy broadly refers to having the skills, the trust and the confidence to participate in and make the most of the digital world. So a digitally literate person is really able to re reap both the social and the economic benefits of being online. And when we talk about digital literacy now, we're really moving away from its traditional con connotations like learning to word process or making spreadsheets. Because today a more central part of digital literacy is e-literacy, which means having the skills required to use the internet and be connected. So we find um, today tasks like filling out forms online, communicating using technology, finding information online and navigating the web is truly, uh, are truly all life skills. And this is especially true now, now that doing things like applying for jobs online and accessing services, including government services, are often exclusively done online. So across every context we've worked in, there, um, we find that there are four main barriers to digital inclusion. And these are skills, access, and that refers to both affordability and availability of devices and the internet, trust and motivation. So I would just like to do a quick poll. Um, I think it would be really interesting what barriers you find most challenging for your community and your clients in relation to technology. So I'm just loading that up now. Um, it should pop up on your screen. You can select multiple answers if you'd like. Um, so go ahead and answer the question, what is the biggest challenge your community or your clients face in getting online? So I'll just give that a few seconds. I've got um, about 88% at the moment for skills. And I'm just going to close this poll shortly in two seconds. So fantastic. Thank you so much for answering. So 
At the moment, we have 90% of the participants who've reported skills being the greatest barrier to achieving inclusion online, and 50% uh, 57 cents, I'm sorry, have said availability. And that's really, really something that we find throughout every community that we work in. The lack of skills um, is a really, really big issue. And the investment that goes into um, investing into technologies isn't matched by an investment into skills. And I think you'll also find that really these barriers are so interrelated. So the more you build things like digital literacy, um, the more trust in technology is built and um, along with that, the, the more motivation grows for people to be online. Um, so our main work is in that skills area and we find that it's really the most lacking area in terms of digital inclusion. So in order to help people develop digital literacy and overcome these barriers, we work with a digital mentoring model. So that means that people can access free one-on-one -on -one support from a volunteer digital mentor to learn about how to use their devices and the internet. And this model really is a departure from traditional models involving structured and computer-only learning. And the benefits of these are, are so uh, multifaceted. Um, having one-on-one -on -one support and unstructured support makes it tailored. It's a really fluid approach that's more relevant in today's world where things like smart devices are really central to everyday life. And I think that you'll also find in a lot of disadvantaged areas that there are many households that don't have a computer or an internet connection. And the primary way for people is um, to connect to the internet is often through a smartphone. So having digital mentoring matches the rapid pace of um, changes in technology and also lets people learn at their own pace. Most importantly, it lets people learn about the things that they want to learn about. And it doesn't really matter whether that means they want, um, they want, whether they want to learn to access their NDIS plans or apply for a job online or whether they really just want to update us, um, update their software to get Candy Crush on their phone. So it's really open to people of all needs. Unlike outreach programs where external organisations come into communities and do set courses for a set amount of weeks, managing your own digital mentoring program and your own volunteer digital mentors is truly a sustainable model and it allows people to build trust with others and with technology. It works with this idea of trusted faces in local places. And that's a concept coined by a UK digital inclusion inclu um, organization called Dot Everyone. And through their extensive work um, with digital mentoring, through their large scale digital mentoring initiatives um, across the UK, their key finding has consistently been that people learn best from repeated, informal, face-to-face -face, and one-on-one -on -one support. So this is our Leap in Lab, and it's um, our weekly digital mentoring program. It runs every Friday and Wednesday from 10 a.m. till midday. And our lab is completely unfunded and powered by 11 volunteer digital mentors. We have a booking system, and people are able to book in for hour-long appointments each. So learners usually bring their own device, though we do have a couple of spare laptops and iPads that we lend out. But we do encourage people to bring their own devices so that their knowledge um, is more applicable and relevant. In regards to starting your own program, if someone doesn't have a device or your client group uh, don't really have access to devices, uh, it's really important to consider um, how you're going to make devices available or if you... Um, or you could consider holding your sessions at a place like a public, at a library or somewhere with public access computers. You can also really get creative with partnerships in order to find a suitable space or even donated devices. So our lab is in large part run by a volunteer program coordinator, and she basically looks after all the organisational and admin tasks for our lab. This is a really, really helpful way of reducing staff commitment to maintaining the program and is also a really great volunteering opportunity. So if you look at the picture on the left hand of your screen, that's Lisa sitting on the left doing some digital mentoring, and she's our coordinator for the Leap in Lab. She is a total superstar and is currently transitioning careers, and it's just a really excellent way of getting some experience and improving her employability. So personal development for volunteers is really, really an important part of the digital mentoring model. Uh, in the middle of the picture on the right-hand side, that's our digital mentor, Chris. 
Um, and he's um, in that picture mentoring two people at once because we had a really busy day. Chris has a rare disability, and because of um, the underestimation that went along with that, um, he was a, a sitting at home all day gaming. And our CEO met him at an event last year, roped him into volunteering as a digital mentor, and he is now so instrumental to our lab. He's in high demand, and the confidence that he's gained through this program really has um, seen him kind of embrace his capacity, and now he's looking into the future of perhaps joining the workforce. So in the lab, one of our key learnings has been that having regular sessions is vital. So it's vital because people lose momentum with their learning and, and they also lose their motivation if there's too much space between sessions. So it's really important to have weekly sessions, we recommend. And it, um, people also really thrive from coming back and repeating tasks. I guarantee that if we had our program fortnightly, that people would not really come in remembering anything they'd done two weeks ago. So it's also really great if they're hopping on every week and immersing themselves in technology and breaking down the weariness that they have towards it becoming and becoming confident by just leaping in. So it's for these reasons we no longer even break during school holidays. We run, um, we don't run terms, we just run um, every week throughout the year. And um, true to form, we really haven't had a lull in any of these holiday weeks. Perhaps our most vital learning from the Leap In Lab has been that the social dimension in the program is the most fundamental to its success and its purpose. So we see digital inclusion foremost as a form of social inclusion. And that really means not, not only does it enable socialising online and um, through networking and communication, but it's really an opportunity to make connections in real spaces. So our lab has a really vibrant social cultures and people from all sorts of different backgrounds and ages come together and chat. They have a cup of tea and a laugh and they learn about technology. Technology can be something really scary and unfriendly to a lot of people. So this program, your digital mentoring program, should really make them stop being scared when they think of technology and instead associate it with what they get out of your program. So if someone thinks of your program and thinks that's a really fun part of my week or that's a really play, uh, that's a place I really um, trust to help me, then you're also building in them a trust in technology. So using the Leap in Lab as a model, here are the four main steps and considerations in establishing your own digital mentoring program. One, pick a day and a venue. Two, recruit your mentors three, promote your sessions, and four, organize and maintain your program. So please just take into account that there um, is quite some diversity in the participants for this webinar today. Not everything is totally relevant to e in each context that you might want to start a program. So just disregard any parts that might not apply to you in particular. And what I mean by that is that you might be an organization or an institution that wants to create a program that is open to the general public for all general digital literacy needs, or you might be an organization that wants to start a program for a specific um, group of clients that you already have, and they might have really specific needs. Uh, I have made this webinar geared more towards a general program, just so it's really applicable in a wider range of contexts. So the first step to start a program is to pick a venue and a day. So it really goes without saying that you need to pick a day of the week um, to offer digital mentoring when you think people will be most likely to come. In our experience, after midday, it is significantly less likely for people to come in, uh, especially if you're dealing with a high volume of seniors. Um, Wednesdays are also our really, really busy days, and we, uh, we have a bit more of a lull on Fridays. So it's all about getting to know your community and also learning through experience. So you could also be constrained by volunteer availabilities. That's also a consideration. Some people choose to um, get their volunteers first and then pick a day accordingly, and some do it the other way around and recruit volunteers with a set day and time in mind. Uh, so you need to decide which is more appropriate for your program. Uh, it's really important also to consider that um, a lot of the time it takes quite a while for traction uh, to gain traction with a program and it might take a few weeks or months until you're getting more learners through the door. So when picking a venue, the most important consideration should be Wi-Fi access and that needs to be a stable and um, public connection. Uh, 
Uh, obviously, there should be tables and chairs provided, and having working and accessible power outlets is also preferable, uh, especially since a lot of the time also people come in with uncharged devices or might not know how to charge them. Preferably, um, the venue should have a place where you can make a cup of tea and put some biscuits out um, because really, as I said before, it really is about creating a relaxed and social environment. Uh, of course, if you are in a library or um, a place where that's not possible, then um, that might not be an option. Uh, the venue should be safe and accessible, and we do find that about up to half of the learners and the mentors on any given day at our Leapin Lab have some form of disability. So it's really important that the venue be somewhere that's inclusive. So the next step is to recruit volunteers. So um, on the screen, you can see our postcards that we use to recruit digital mentors. We can provide you with copies of these or in the toolkit, there is a more generic and editable version of a flyer. Um, if you're in our funded LGAs for volunteer solutions, Loop can, re Leap, I apologize, can um, recruit digital mentors for you. Those LGAs are currently Cumberland, Parramatta, The Hills, Blacktown, Penrith, Hawkesbury and Blue Mountains. But if you don't fall into these LGAs and you need further support and advice, we can provide you with that advice on how to recruit. Um, so once you have these flyers, whether they're the postcard, something you make up yourself or from the toolkit, uh, if you would like to recruit yourself, it's important to circulate them through your own channels and also in local places where you think people might see them. So local notice boards and libraries. And later on, I'm going to talk a bit about promoting your sessions and that might also give you a bit more of an idea of how you could promote volunteering opportunities. Uh, of course, if you are an um, organ organization that already has volunteers, you can ask your existing volunteers if they would have the time or the interest um, to be involved in digital mentoring. So when looking for digital mentors, please remember that digital mentoring is really not about anything else other than um, providing social support and improving basic digital literacy. It's not about understanding hardware and it's not about fixing technology. So digital mentors don't have to know everything and they really certainly don't have to be IT wizards to be in this role. And of course, if they don't know something, it's not a big drama. They um, can ask another mentor or they can, you know, the single most common way that mentors problem solve is exactly as you'd expect. They just Google it. So mentors largely work um, out of the knowledge in their own head. And if there is an um, mentor who might know something a bit more complex or specialized then um, and there are learners interested in learning about that topic then they can always set up a little group demo or a workshop so mentoring really is a fluid structure and it's agile it adapts to the needs of people both learning and mentoring and it's important to make sure that the learners who come into your program to get support really are made aware that the mentors are volunteers and they're not expected to have answers to everything so Whilst a digital mentor doesn't need to be a tech genius, here are a few musts. They must be patient. They must be non-judgmental of people's backgrounds, abilities, skill sets and understandings. And they must really use their skills and their knowledge to show people how to do things rather than doing it for them. So digital mentors aren't there to do technology tasks for people. Um, they're there to support people to develop skills so that they can do it for themselves. So um, I can see a question about volunteer training. So I'm just actually about to get to that. And um, there are two answers to that. Um, we are coming up with volunteer training specifically for digital mentoring. And that will be an online course released uh, hopefully late in September um, by LEAP. There will also be, um, we sorry, our volunteer solutions team also does general training for volunteer, both volunteers and volunteer management. And those are on topics such as um, accidental counselling, counselling, cultural competency um, and a legend to volunteering, which is really a um, holistic introduction to volunteering. Um, and another answer to that is that we have access to an online learning platform. It's called Learn My Way, and it was created by an organization called the Good Things Foundation, which, um, and the modules on it 
Some of them are UK specific, but it has a lot of generalized content. And inside that learning platform, there is a module and it's called how to be a digital champion. Um, there's information on that inside the toolkit and um, we do get our digital mentors to complete that online module and it's interactive and really goes through the skills and qualities necessary to be a digital mentor. Inside the toolkit there is also a bit of um, induction material that you can give out to a digital mentoring and it kind of goes over these qualities that they need to have. Um, it's also really important that you make mentors aware of their privacy and make sure that they never do things like share passwords or private details. And that goes for learners too. So um, again, that those information sheets um, are in the digital mentoring toolkit and you can pop them into a welcome pack and give them to both mentors and to learners so that they know about these things. Uh, another really useful thing to do is to create an email, um, a generic one that um, for your program, you can give all the mentors the password to that. And then if they want to practice emailing with the learners, they don't have to give out their personal emails. So um, the next step, is to promote your sessions. We promote our lab offline and online. Now, obviously we are targeting people who are not digital natives. So having an offline campaign is really, really important. This um, on the screen is our flyer for the lab. That's the front page on the left-hand side and the back page on the um, right. I've just noticed that this actually isn't our current one because we no longer do tech workshops every Friday. Those are now every second Friday. So um, our volunteers do create technology workshops on specific topics, um, but really the mentoring has proved way more popular than um, any sort of structured learning. So we, we've taken that back to only um, once every fortnight and we get lines at our door despite taking bookings on a Wednesday for the digital mentoring. Uh, we don't have one at the moment in the toolkit, but we will be working on um, making a nice generic unbranded flyer for um, promotion that you can edit. So stay tuned in the next few weeks for that. And you'll also be able to pop your own details and branding onto that. I really should disclaim here that any program you choose to establish using our resources will be totally your own. Uh, Leap is just here to get the ball rolling and provide ongoing support behind the scenes. So for an offline campaign, you could leave flyers anywhere you think your audience, um, your target audience might frequent, local clubs, notice boards, cafes, centres, libraries, etc. You could also contact local radio and newspapers, and that's a really, really surefire way of um, getting your information out there, especially if you're targeting seniors. So whilst we are targeting the offline population, it's still really important and effective to promote online. And that's for three reasons. Firstly, um, you might reach your target audience directly. Not everyone that comes in is totally offline. They might be using social media or visiting your website. Uh, secondly, people are often looking for support for a family member so or, or someone they know. So we get a lot of people booking in for their parent or their grandparent or, um, or having a look for support online. Uh, thirdly, getting the word out to service providers and institutions, um, clubs, or just raising your profile um, generally in the community is the best way to get referrals to your program. So people, um, if people know that you're providing this service, then they can direct their friends or clients or whoever onto your program. So also in regards to online campaigns, we can help you promote your program through our e-news portal called Community Net, which you should subscribe to if you haven't. Um, and also through our Leapin Network digital platform, and I'll be talking uh, more about that later. Also, to find Community Net, you can visit Community Not Net. Oh, my apologies, Community Net NGO. So, moving on to organisational considerations. Um, because this is a one-on-one -on -one model, it's really, really important to take bookings. So, you don't want mentors to be showing up without needing to. And you also don't want to leave learners um, without a mentor. So, of course, if people want to attend with a friend or a family member or a support worker, a mentor can see two people at once. And this is really common with seniors. Um, they often want to learn to do something as a couple. Um, just make sure when you take the bookings that if people do want to learn with more than one person that um, they specify so when they book. 
We also do find it useful that, um, if people um, include very shortly um, a bit about what they want to learn about when they make their bookings. And um, that's just so that mentors can be a bit prepared and so that you can match up learners and mentors effectively. So if one mentor knows more about that specific um, device or program that that person wants to learn about, then you can pair them with that person. Um, it's important to hand out welcome packs, as I spoke about before, and these should both go to the learner and their mentor, but have different um, information in it. The toolkit um, has all these documents in it, and um, they include understandings of roles and responsibilities. There's a comprehensive position description that you can distribute to the mentors, and also little disclaimer sheets on consent and privacy, which is an important um, thing, again, for both mentors and learners to know about. So volunteer management um, is one of the biggest, I guess, organisational considerations that you need to be thinking about. Um, there need to be appropriate volunteer management procedures in place, including appropriate insurance and um, WHS induction materials. We have, uh, LEAP provides a lot of training and resources on volunteer management, and that's run through our volunteer support service. So please do get in touch with us if you would like to know more about that. We um, like to involve our volunteers in all our decision-making processes surrounding our lab. We have evaluation days and um, planning days, and we also have regular volunteer recognition events. So um, as I mentioned before, we also have a volunteer program coordinator, and she really, really helps with so much of the organisation and maintenance of the program. And this is a really effective way to make managing a program kind of smoother sailing. So um, you'll also need to decide what type of data you'd like to be collecting on your program. Data helps you track your progress and uh, make suitable updates or improvements to a program. And our toolkit has some of the um, basic resources for recording and keeping uh, for record keeping, including templates for session records and attendance roles. We also have included um, a sheet called a skills assessment inside the toolkit, and that's just a simple little survey which can be completed by learners before starting the program, and then you can give it out incrementally thereafter to measure progress. So we would really like to be collecting the da um, some data from digital mentoring programs in the future to help along work with um, Digital, um, with digital inclusion, and this is really important. So it doesn't really have to be time consuming if you have some pre procedures for data collection in place. And also, again, having a volunteer program coordinator is something that's really helped us in this regard. So we hope that anyone um, who provides a digital mentoring program signs up to the Leap In Network. Uh, you can reach our network platform at www.leap.ngo and um, going to our digital inclusion tab. I've put a red arrow there where you can see um, where to go. For anyone familiar perhaps with our old platform, you might notice that it's moved from um, leapin.ngo over to our main site, but you can still visit Leapin. It should redirect, and that's why things might look and work a bit differently now. So we have moved everything over there, so the same content should be in there. Um, the Leap In Network is a social and digital inclusion movement, and it's made up of services providing digital support to improve people's lives through technology. So if you go to um, the website, you can see a map, and then there's a directory. Um, and to be on the map, you have to be offering some form of digital support. And that can really range from just free access to the internet or to devices, or to technology classes, workshops, ad hoc support, or mentoring. So um, people can use a search tool or just explore the map to see what's available in their local area. Uh, here is the Leap in Lab profile. You can make your profile like it and it can display your contact details, a bit about the program, a photograph and how to make bookings and, um, and get in contact. So it's totally free to join the network and um, you can just visit our site and register. It'll go straight to the page where you can add your program. Um, if you do decide you would like to start a program, I've been over a few of these, um, but the things that LEAP provide for free to support the establishment of your program is our digital mentoring toolkit, 
And this is fully editable and um, you can pick and choose whichever of the resources you'd like to use. You might not want to use all of them. You can also kind of use them as inspiration if you'd like to make your own templates. Um, we can help you promote your programs via CommunityNet and that's our e-news portal for not-for-profit sector. We can help with recruiting digital mentors within our funded LGAs for volunteer recruitment. If you'd like any clarity on those, again, just visit our website and visit our volunteer solutions section. Uh, so we do do general um, volunteer and volunteer, manage, um, that volunteer management training um, on a range of different topics. Um, these are for volunteering in general, but as I said before, our team is working on um, a training course specifically for digital mentoring, and that will be out this year in September. Um, we can also um, give you our centre code for Learn My Way, which is that online platform that I spoke about earlier. The code is Leap in Network, but I've written that inside the um, toolkit. And you can use that um, um, those online modules um, to learn about basic digital literacy as well. And there are, um, there are I think, about 50 um, basic digital literacy um, modules. So if your learners want to hop on and do some training by themselves when they go home, or if they want to come in and do it with a buddy, then um, it's a really fantastic resource to learn about the basics. So LEAP can provide ongoing advice, um, you can feel free to email me or give me a call at any time for um, if you have any questions. And um, basically, if you would like to um, join up, you can edit your profile anytime if you'd like to join um, the network. It is completely free and you can not only rely on us for support, but you can make connections with anyone inside the network and um, see how they're, how they're running their program. Um, so with that, I'm um, about to come up to the question section. Um, I'd be happy to take any questions you have. Uh, if I don't get time to answer them all, or if you don't have one right now, then you can always pop it in an email and I'd be happy to answer that later. Um, so thank you so much for participating and I'm just going to wait a bit for any questions to roll in. So um, Beck Reedy has asked, uh, how regular are our um, volunteer recognition events? Um, we do, for the lab, at least every three months have a um, session where we kind of evaluate but also celebrate the lab and have a little lunch. We um, do some catering, talk about the lab and have a little celebration. But um, this year we've so far had one big lunch where all the staff and volunteers go, went out and, you know, had little a little awards ceremony and things like that. So it's about once a year or twice a year where we do that whole kind of organisation wide um, celebration for volunteers. Okay, so um, another question that I've gotten is, um, can we add services links if we're outside the LGA served? Uh, absolutely. So this network is open for anyone. We're even happy to have people on there Australia wide. We'd love to go through um, any any state, any area. Um, please join up. We're really happy to have anyone um, joining and we'd really like to branch out of Greater Western Sydney and um, encourage digital inclusion really as much as we can in any place. So, um, Another question is, how do I book my volunteers into training? So if you would like to book your volunteers into training or book yourself in for a volunteer management training, please visit us at leap.ngo, that's with two E's, and um, go to our volunteer solutions page. There's an events and training calendar and you can sign up through that. If you are having issues or someone is having issues with um, that website or isn't confident with um, using the internet, just give us a call and someone um, at LEAP will help you out by booking you in. And our number is 47211866. So I'm just getting waiting for any other questions to come through, please feel free. I'm just going to wait a few more minutes. It's been really glad, um, it's been really great having everyone join us today. I really, really do hope that you got something out of this last hour and please feel free to contact me for any further information. 
Uh, again, I will be sending out the recording later today and along with that goes the digital mentoring toolkit. Um, and I'll also be including a short um, survey. So please do complete that if you just get a second, it's not very long. Okay, so I'm just getting a few more questions in here. Um, so um, this question says, hi, your model seems to work well. However, what about more traditional models of semester classrooms, teaching programs in neighborhood houses and libraries? So um, really digital inclusion is about having all these pieces, all the puzzle pieces put together to make sure that everyone in the community is getting the support that they need. Of course, structured classes work for people and it's really good for people that want to know about specific things. So if they, they want to learn about word processing or how to do um, something that that class is about, it's really fantastic that those things are on offer. Offer Our model just allows a bit more freedom in terms of content. Like often people go to places like Tech Savvy Seniors and then come to us and then, you know, say that really they just want to know how to use WhatsApp to talk to the grandchildren. So it's, it's really fantastic in that sense. Also, structured learning isn't for a lot of people because of the pace. Um, not everyone can learn at a pace that a teacher might want to move at. And um, that's not to knock semester classrooms. The only other thing with semesters is that it's not, um, you know, having weekly sessions that don't break really um, enable people a greater amount of freedom with their learning. And um, especially, you know, with flexible, um, it's a flexible arrangement where, um, you know, if they've got grandkids that they're looking after or um, work commitments, then um, they can really fit the mentoring around that. Um, and of course, it, it still is an effective model of learning about things. So yeah, structured learning can be a really positive thing. Um, so another question I have here is, are you able to come in and do face-to-face -face training in rural areas or just the online training? Uh, in regards to our digital mentoring training, uh, at the moment, our plans are to be online. Um, I will update everyone on this webinar and on our website if there have been any you know if there are any changes to that uh, we would love to be in rural places we do do training IT training um, in rural areas um, and that is through our IT consultant um, Anne-Marie but that's more for um, organizations that need some help with IT um, I will keep you posted on that question if anything else comes up um, so Bruce has asked, do you have any examples of that working? Um, so Bruce, if you're still there, I'd just like an ex a bit of an um, sorry, a, um, a bit of an expansion on that. What do you mean by um, that in this question? I, I'm not quite sure. Um, in terms of digital mentoring, it really does work. Um, we have lines at our doors from the lab every day. We have so many people whose lives have really been changed by being able to log on. And um, in the UK, um, the digital mentoring model is really, really um, popular. So um, organisations like the Good Things Foundation and Go On UK, which are now dot everyone, sorry, um, they have um, digital mentoring models and they've reached, I think, over 2 million learners. Um, with digital mentoring since 2010 to provide them with basic digital literacy skills. And um, apart from, um, you know, the, the the course structure being fluid, it's also about trust. So digital mentoring allows, allows people to um, build rapports with individuals and, and gain that trust where it might be something that's really scary to them and get a really holistic um, form of support. It's also um, not um, really realistic for everyone to go into places like libraries or institutions. They might feel not comfortable in those types of places. So having, you know, going hyper local and having programs like this in places where people really trust, it's um, it, it enables kind of a, a wider um, range of people from different backgrounds to, to get assistance. Um, so 
I've got a question that says, do you think it will be worthwhile having regular events? Absolutely. Having events really keeps momentum up. It keeps, um, it's really good to get um, awareness and the word out there for digital inclusion. Uh, it inspires people to get involved, whether that's get involved as a learner, getting involved as a volunteer, getting involved as a service provider. The more you raise the profile for digital inclusion, the more you're going to raise, raise digital literacy and access in our communities. So whether it's events for thanking your volunteers or whether it's events in the community um, that are to get involved with technology. Um, bringing community stakeholders together is a really important thing to do and it's really important to just keep the conversation going. Um, so a que another question I have is, is there a similar service available in central Victoria that you know of? I don't know of any in central Victoria, um, my apologies, but I would be happy to have a look for you and um, get back to you with that. Um, so yeah, I'd be happy to send you an email if I do see anything coming up. Um, ah, so um, the question, do you think it would be worthwhile having regular events for digital learning lab organizers? Sorry, I just saw the second part of that question which came in separately. Um, absolutely, it's really great just to learn from each other. Um, we haven't done this yet. But um, I think it would be totally interesting. We do have a Skype meeting coming up with um, a, pro a digital mentoring program in the UK, which is um, in Stockport. So um, that will be one of our first meetings with Learning Lab organisers. And we're just going to share learnings. And also our digital mentors are going to be participating in that. So we can um, see some um, digital mentors get together and connect internationally. And that's really exciting. So, um Just having a look through these questions, sorry. Um, great. Um, I might draw this to a close shortly. If I didn't get around to your question, I apologise. I have answered everything inside the panel, I think. Um, if you would like to send me a question, as I said, my email address is at the bottom of the slide. It's himaliraj at leap.ng. Sorry, not himaliraj at leap.ngo. It's himalir at leap.ngo. Don't put Raj in there. Um, thank you again so much for joining me today. I'll be sending out the recording later today along with those resources that I've spoken about. It's been fantastic um, participating with you all and I hope to see, um, to see you all next time in our next series of webinars.